Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and I am very excited to get my hands on one of these Generation 2 Unify switches. So this is the USW 24 PoE. This is one of the brand new Generation 2 switches, and they've got a ton of these switches coming out. There's only four out right now, but there's another four in the early access store. So before I really dig into this thing and unbox it, let's take a quick look at all of the different Generation 2 Unify switches that are hitting the market right now. So the first one is the USW 16 PoE. That's 299 bucks. It's a layer two switch. You're looking at eight gigabit ethernet ports with PoE plus and eight non PoE ports. It also has two one gigabit SFP ports. So I'm not actually gonna talk about the ones that are in the early access store, but you guys can kind of fill in the blanks here. Or if you have early access store access on Ubiquiti's website, you can go check out these other models that I'm not gonna mention here. So we're gonna skip one. Then we get to this one that I have here. This is the US24 PoE, retails for $379. Layer two switch, it's got 16 PoE plus ports, eight non PoE ports, and two SFP one gigabit uh, fiber ports. Then we're gonna skip another one and we're gonna get into the USW Pro 24 PoE. So this is the non pro version. The pro version of these switches basically means that it is a layer three switch and layer three with a caveat because they're not layer three yet, but Ubiquiti says that with a software update in the future, these pro switches will have layer three capabilities. The USW Pro 24 PoE also features 16 PoE plus ports and eight PoE++ ports. Uh, it retails for $699, by the way. And it also has two SFP plus 10 gigabit fiber ports. So for those of you out there, I hear this every single time I do a review on a Switch. Oh, Chris, how come it doesn't have SFP plus ports? Well, if you spend the money, you can get the switches, the 24 port Pro Unify switch that has the 10 gigabit uplinks for all of you 10 gigabit uplink snobs out there. Uh, so then we're gonna skip another couple and we're going to get to the last one that has been released already. And that is the USW Pro 48 PoE. So that is also a layer three switch. It retails for $1,099. It has 40 PoE plus gigabit ethernet ports and eight PoE plus plus. PoE++ is 802.3BT. Uh, and then it has four 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. So that is kind of like the big daddy of these generation two switches. Anyways, as those other ones come out of beta, I will be able to talk about them. Unfortunately, Ubiquity does not like me talking about early access stuff before they're actually released to the general public. So let's talk about this one though. This is the US24 PoE. I'm gonna do a quick unboxing here because there's not much to these sort of more utilitarian uh, boxes that come with these switches. Uh, there is a note right here where we can download the quick start guide. There's a QR code right on the box. And if we pop it open, we get power cord, rack mount ears, and then some screws and hardware. Then we have the switch itself. Oh, look at this thing. So one of the nice things about these generation two switches, at least the, this one, I'm not sure if they're all exactly the same, but this switch is fanless. So there is no fan. If you guys uh, go back through my channel, the switch that I have in place right now is the old US24 250 watt, the generation one of basically of this switch. And it had very loud fans that I had to replace with Noctua fans. And this one, is supposedly perfectly quiet because it's a fanless design. And from what I've read and seen online, uh, people are very impressed with the heat dissipation in this thing. Uh, now, I'm not gonna crack this switch open. Uh, if you wanna see someone crack one of these open, uh, Tom Lawrence did a video on this, so I will uh, put a link down to Tom's video where he actually opened the chassis and took a look inside at the fanless design. But yeah, as you can see, there's no fan vent holes anywhere around this switch whatsoever. Another thing that you might notice right off the bat is that this switch has a 7.9 inch depth. Okay, so the older switches are 11 inch depth, the ones with the fans. So this is a more compact form factor for this switch, which I think is absolutely wonderful. So again, this MSRP is for $379. 
Uh, it is a layer two switch. It has 16 PoE plus ports and you can see all of the, the ports one through 16 have a little lightning bolt with a plus next to them. That's gonna be 802.3 AF and AT uh, for the first 16 ports. And then these last eight ports here are no PoE whatsoever. Then we have our two uh, gigabit SFP slots here. And another thing that is really cool about these switches, if you look over here in the corner, there is a little LCD screen, or I think they call it an LCM screen. I just pulled off the little paper that covers it. This is a really neat little feature of these switches. It's a touch screen, and we're gonna get more into the touch screen later in this video when I actually have this switch set up and operational. So I guess that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna take this switch and I'm going to replace the one that I currently have uh, over on my sort of main desk station over here. And then once I replace it and adopt it, uh, we will come back and uh, I will show you the LCD and any other kind of cool features about this switch. I'm now all switched over, pun intended, and you can see that it is so much cleaner on my desk over here. I used to have the old 24 port switch sitting right here on the desk and I have now moved it underneath uh, with this uh, nice under the desk 1U rack mount uh, bracket that I have. I've actually had this bracket sitting under my desk for years and uh, I used to have my phone system there and now it is going to be housing this switch so that I can kind of clean up my desktop over here a little bit and I absolutely love it. I think it looks so much better without the uh, 24 port switch sitting right on the desktop. Let's take a look at this switch in Unify. Here we can see the US24 PoE. If I click on it, there's a couple of differences from my previous switch and I wanted to point those out. First and foremost, if we click on ports, we look at one of these PoE ports, there is no longer the option for 24 volt passive PoE out of this switch. So if you need 24 volt passive PoE, such as like my camera that I have up here above my desk, I'm gonna have to have a um, PoE injector to power up that camera. Actually, this one is a dome camera. I think it'll do 802.3 AF, but the cord was not long enough to get all the way over to where it needed to be. So I'm gonna have to rerun that cable anyways. Other than that, we do have some settings for the actual screen of the second gen uh, USWs. So there are site settings. I just have everything on site settings and you can find the site settings for the switches over in settings. And then they're just right here. So LED and screen settings. LED screen, enable it or disable it. We've got the screen brightness. And then we've got this really cool thing called multi-screen, enable rack multi-screen synchronization, right? So that basically means if you've got a number of these switches stacked up in a rack, you can have them so that they're all displaying the same information. They're sort of timed together so that um, they're not like all over the place and it just sort of looks like a neat little effect. Uh, I've seen some uh, video online of multiple switches showing the same thing on their screens and switching screens at the same time and stuff. Then we've got a screen timeout of 300 seconds and really that's about it. When I, infer when I first installed this device, it was on an older version of firmware. It was on, specifically it was on 4.0.49 and so I updated it to 4.0.66 and I highly recommend that you do so. When the switch was on 4.0.49, the functionality of the touchscreen was pretty minimal. You can just basically tap the screen and it would like cycle through a few different um, metrics and statistics, but there wasn't anything you know super spectacular about it. They made huge improvements to the touchscreen between 4.0.49 and 4.0.66. Let me show you those improvements now because I love the way that the touchscreen works on this switch. 
Okay, so here we have the USW touchscreen. We're just going to hit it once. And so the sort of unify access point that's right in the center turns the touchscreen on and off. You can see just by a touch there. And then we have these four corners with different information. So the top left corner here is your port information. So if we click on that, we can start drilling into our ports. So we've got Ethernet ports, SFP ports. Well, let's take a look at Ethernet ports. Then we've got ports 1 through 12, and we've got ports 13 through 24. And notice that it actually shows, you know, gigabit, 10, 100. It shows which ports have active connections. So let's, for instance, look at 1 through 12. And then we can see out of 1 through 12, only 1 through 4 are populated. Let's look at those. And we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, with uh, 4 being 10, 100, and these green ones all being uh, gigabit connections. So let's take a look at, for instance, number 1. And here we can see that number one is, here's the real-time traffic data from this port. And then we've got PoE at 3.4 watts. So this first one, I believe, I believe if I'm not mistaken, this is my Clearly IP phone, right? So we got 3.4 watts on the Clearly IP phone and we can see the traffic going into and from the phone. Now, if we swipe on the screen, we can go to port two, port three, port four, and then of course, uh, and oh, it actually goes to port five. I thought that might go to port one, but it actually goes to port five. So port five shows down since there's nothing plugged in. And then of course we can scroll through until we find another one. Should be port 16, port 15, port 16. There we go. So port 16, six, uh, 8.5 watts PoE. What is port 16? Ah, port 16 is my cloud key gen two plus. So that is why that one is pulling, uh, you know, looks like anywhere between 7 to 11 and a half watts there. Uh, and a decent amount of um, upload to this device because of all of the cameras that are currently writing to it. So we can see 9.2 megabits of upload. Here we have one that doesn't have any PoE. Uh, it's just an RJ45, so this is uh, no PoE down at the bottom. Now, if you have something plugged into PoE, uh, swipe up, by the way, to go back. There we go. If you have something plugged into a PoE port that's not using PoE, it'll say PoE plus, but it doesn't have a wattage next to it, right? So see how this one has wattage? This one does not. All right, let's go back home. Uh, top right, we have our statistics. So here's our total throughput to the switch. And notice there's a little real-time graph as well. And then you've got all these different pages of information. So it tells us our uplink is port 24. If we swipe, we get the system CPU and RAM utilization. If we swipe again, we get the real-time PoE output of the switch. So right now we're at 16 watts. Uh, and then you can see this white line at the bottom is total capacity, PoE capacity of the switch. So you can see that I'm barely use, uh, using it with the devices that I have plugged in. Uh, last seven days, we can see the total wattage, uh, watt hours, 60 watt hours. Uh, this is, says last seven days, but in reality, uh, you know, I just plugged this thing in yesterday. So um, this will populate over time. And then finally, we have the same thing, but lasts 30 days. All right, let's go, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, while we're looking at this throughput graph, let's go ahead and run a speed test on my computer and see what that looks like. All right, so I've started a speed test to speedtest.net, and we should very shortly see that speed test reflected uh, on this graph here. There it goes. So now the download portion has stopped and now we should see the upload portion start to go. And my connection here is about 400 by 20. So that looks almost exactly perfect. Now watch it'll scale as the download speed test goes away. Watch it scale. There it goes. So now you can see this is the end of the upload speed test right there. So that's pretty cool. All right, so then we've got uh, system. Oh yeah, there's system use uh, resources. We already looked through all of that stuff. Down here in the, uh, going clockwise here, this little settings icon, this allows us to adjust the screen brightness, the LCD screen brightness. We'll put it back up at about 80. Also configurable from within Unify. We can change the background color. This you can't do in Unify. This you can only do here uh, in, uh, on the switch itself, it seems. We'll make it green there. Uh, then we have uh, just our statistics. This is just telling us uh, what we're seeing on the ports, right? So for PoE, no light is uh, no PoE, and uh, orange light is 802.3 AF, or AT, I guess. Then we have link here. 
10100 is orange, gigabit is green. Scroll again, and we've got the SFP ports, same information. So if it's just uh, regular, we've got uh, one gig is uh, green. So we'll see a green up and down there for one gig. I actually don't like this uh, color. I'm going to go back to blue. Let's do a lighter blue. No? We'll do that teal color. That looks nicer. Uh, okay, and then finally we have information. This is the IP address of the switch the IP address of the Unify controller, the uptime of the switch. This is four hours, 37 minutes since I ran the updates and it last rebooted. And then we have the Mac address and the uh, firmware version. And that's it. So that's pretty useful information. And uh, yeah, so I'm really digging this new touchscreen. It's certainly a lot better than it was in the previous firmware that I had when I, when I received the switch. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's really impressive. All right, there we have it. A quick look at the new USW24POE Generation 2 switch from Ubiquity Networks. What do you guys think about this switch? Do you think the touch screen is just a gimmick or do you find that actually to be useful in like a, uh, you know, a production environment? Let me know down in the comments below along with any other thoughts or questions that you may have. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.